our theme? Anybody remember what is our theme? Nobody remembers? Good. It's church, it is his house. Church, it is his house. So we've been looking at a couple of verses, but we are going to stick to one verse today, 1 Timothy 3, 14 and 15. We're going to read it. These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I'm delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you will speak to us. We yield our lives to you. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us. Mold us, mend us, impress your image upon us so that Christ be seen in us, Father. Thank you, Lord. Every resistance to the preaching of God's word, we bind them in the name of Jesus. We pray for your glory to be revealed, Father. Hallelujah. We we take victory in the name of Jesus. They overcame the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of the testimony. So be it in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We continue with our theme, and I'm going to do a quick recap. The church is always one generation away from being deviated from its track that the Lord has put, which leads to its spiritual demise if it's not preserved by... ...ourselves being told what Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. Praise the Lord. Slight deviation over the course of time as the potential for derailment from the purpose and the original design of the designer. Praise the Lord. We've been reminded over and over again through the scripture that the church belongs to God. Paul puts it like this, is the church of the living God, the house of God, is the church of the living God. And so we said it is the ground and the pillar of truth as the ground and the pillar of truth. Church being the ground of the pillar of truth has certain responsibility. And what is that? We said the church has to declare the truth, display the truth, and defend the truth. Declare the truth, display the truth, and defend the truth. Jesus, when he was standing before Pilate, Pilate asked the question, what is the truth? Praise the Lord. The scripture tells us what is the truth. God is the truth. Praise the Lord. Isaiah pronounces it. Jesus said, I am the truth. John chapter 14. Praise the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. Praise the Lord. John chapter 16. The word of God is the truth. John chapter 17. Praise God. Yes. The main truth to which the church is called to bear witness is the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was God manifested in flesh. And it was manifested according to the very purpose of God and the pronouncements of God. God was manifest in flesh. Truth about God and his divine nature, we discussed about it. Who is God? God is love. Praise the Lord. At the same time, God is just. God is righteous. God is holy. He's an immutable God, an unchanging God. Praise the Lord. Everything changes, but God is immutable. Praise God. The truth about who Jesus is, 
is God manifest in flesh. 100% God, 100% man. Praise the Lord. As God, praise the Lord, he is able to save us. As man, he is able to empathize with our weakness. We said our God is not a God who is so far and distant. He who is so detached from us, but one who went through every high roller coaster experiences of life and experienced what you and I go through. That's why the writer of Hebrews says, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness. So he can sympathize with our weakness at the same time he's able to save us to the uttermost. He is incompatible in every aspect. There is none like him. There is only one name given under heaven whereby men can be saved. It's the name of Jesus. He is very unique in his position. He is both the savior and the judge. He is the servant and the king. He is the medium and the mediator. He is the lamb and the lion. He is the redeemer who died for us. And he is a redeemer who lives for evermore. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's word reminds us that our God is a holy God. Praise the Lord. Isaiah was given the vision and he heard the seraphims crying out, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Praise God. Hallelujah. Jesus, when he came on this earth, this is what is written about him. Praise God. He knew no sin. Praise God. He committed no sin. No sin was found in him. Praise God. Jesus knew no sin. He is holy. Praise the Lord. He committed no sin. He is holy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. No sin was found in him. He is holy. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus went through every temptations and battles that we go through. Yet the writer of Hebrews says, he was without sin. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, today we move forward. We want to move forward. As church, it is our responsibility to declare the truth and to display the truth and defend the truth. Praise the Lord. If we have to declare the truth, we have to get ourselves familiar with the truth. We have to saturate ourselves with the word, which is the truth. Praise the Lord. We have to immerse ourselves in the truth. As the writer of the epistle says, let the word of God dwell in you richly. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Praise the Lord. We all want to be rich. We want to be rich in the realms of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He who was rich was made poor for us so that through his poverty we might become rich. God wants us to become rich in the realms of God. And one way we can get rich is when we are full of the word. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We, if we have to declare and display the truth, we need to get ourselves oriented in the word. We live in a world which is controlled by the world as the worldly system, which is controlled by the father of lies. Praise the Lord. And we see, we live in a culture where deception becomes the norm. Deceit and deception is rampant. And the church has to declare God's word, which is the truth, so that people can hear it over and over and over again. Praise the Lord. The more you hear it, the faith in us 
increases. Praise the Lord. The more we hear, read, and meditate God's word, we become equipped to handle the word of truth. Praise the Lord. To declare that truth. Hallelujah. And God expects us to do that in a world that we are living in. There is so much confusion and chaos that the enemy or the father of lies sows because he thrives on lies and deceit. He's a master of confusion and chaos. While our God, the Bible says, is a God of truth. Praise the Lord. He is not the author of confusion, but he is the author of order. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Everything that you see in the universe, we see an order. Praise the Lord. The creation itself, as the psalmist says, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. When you gaze into the skies, when you gaze and look into the creation, you see the meticulous work, the wonder-working hand of God. And you realize that God is not a God of confusion. He's a God of order, which has, who has put everything in its place and everything functions meticulously. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, the children of Christ should get themselves oriented about the truth of creation. Praise the Lord. Why the truth of creation? Because that's where young minds, fresh minds are captured and captivated. There are so many theories that the world puts because when people are not when people do not understand God's word or they do not familiarize themselves with the word of God, then we are open to many kinds of deceit. The church as the pillar of truth ought to present to our generation, to our children, the narratives of creation. Praise the Lord. It is very important because the word Perils, so many other theories, praise the Lord. As in creation, not just simply about putting the planet or the universe together, but the divine design concerning the family, the design concerning marriage, the design concerning how a person ought to conduct their lives. Why is this important? Because the church comprises of individuals and families that eventually become the lay and the leaders of the body of Christ. And their make and their design and their composition, how it ought to be, the Bible proclaims it. And we need to know what the Bible says about creation, about family, about marriage, about the sanctity of life, about what gender is all about. So many things the Bible talks about. And we ought to have our children oriented with the fact, not presented as a story. Many Take it as a story, the story of creation. It's not the story of creation. It should be presented as a fact or the truth of creation. It's not the story of creation. When you present it as a story of creation, it settles in the mind as another story like any other story. It's not a story. It's the truth and the fact of Praise God of creation. Praise the Lord. Every mind is curious to know the origin of everything that we see. The origin of man. The origin of creation. Where did it all come from? Who are we? Who created us? Where are we going? How in the world did we get here? 
The Bible has an answer to all of these things. Praise the Lord. The creation, the creation truth or the fact points out to a God who is in absolute control, who is a sovereign God, who is a creator God, who is a loving God, who is a redeemer God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In a world that promotes so many different kinds of theory in the name of evolution, in the name of Big Bang Theory, in the name of explosion, and so forth, us and our children. We need to get ourselves oriented with the word. The Bible starts by saying, Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God. Praise the Lord. The Bible does not try to prove the existence of God. Praise the Lord. The Bible starts by presenting in the beginning God. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the Bible also tells us that anyone who thinks that there is no God, the Bible calls him a fool. The fool says in his heart that there is no God. Praise the Lord. So the Bible teaches us in the beginning. There is no debate about it. In the beginning, God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the beginning, what did God do? In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Praise the Lord. Time, the inception of time. God the creator initiates it. Hallelujah. In the beginning. Why? The Bible says he is the beginning and the end. He is the alpha and the omega. The first and the last. Praise the Lord. Time has its inception in God himself who the Bible says in the beginning time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It talks about the inception of time. God created the heavens and the earth. Praise the Lord. God is the source of power. God is the source of energy in its rawest form. Praise the Lord. Space is created by God himself because the Bible says God created heavens and earth. Praise the Lord. The space is created by God. The matter is created by. Praise the Lord. God is the source of all. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And the creation fact reminds us of a God who is a creator. He's not only a creator. The Bible reminds us that he is also the sustainer. Praise the Lord. All things are sustained by the power of his word. He speaks everything into creation. And he sustains all things by the power of his word. Like we reminded the other day. Everything that you see in creation. Praise the Lord. God spoke into existence. When man who is created by God, by the dust of the earth, if he wants to create something, he has to use the raw material. But God spoke everything into existence. Praise the Lord. So we see this world that is created by God, the same God created man and woman. The Bible says he created them male and female in the image and in the likeness of God. Praise the Lord. He created both the male and female in the likeness and in the image of God. Praise God. We live in a world there is so much confusion and chaos. Praise the Lord. Because the narrative of the world is controlled by the forces of the worldly system. Praise the Lord. The culture, there is a culture, a worldly culture that is promoted and peddled by forces in this world that wants to shape reshape and mold every life that comes into this world. Regardless of who you are, regardless of what kind of a home and faith that you were born in, you could be born in a Christian home to a godly parent, but there is a power 
constantly working to reshape our minds, to reshape our thinking, to reshape our belief, to mold us into the mold and the image that the world is peddling. And there are many entities that the world uses as agents to reshape our minds. It could be the media. We know how powerful the media has become. The other day I was watching the news and someone was saying, now we can't even believe what the news says because there is so much controversy. There is so much news that are coming that are contrary. Praise the Lord. People cannot simply believe what they hear. So there is media that's pushing their narratives. Then there is the power of the social media. It used to be, there used to be a time when powerful forces or people who had the means and the resources could push their agenda. Now, anyone can push their agenda. The social media has made things so easy for anyone to push their agenda. Even you and I can do it. We can also use the media, the social media, to push what? To declare to display and to defend the truth. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is so much power. Praise the Lord. But the world employs all these powers, all these agencies to capture our mind, to capture our thoughts, to infiltrate our minds and take control of it and make us into the mold of the world or bring us under the control of the father of lies. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We serve the father of the spirit. Praise the Lord. We serve the one who is true and truth. Praise the Lord. And our minds have to be filled and occupied with the truth of God's word. Lest we become infiltrated by the lies of this world. Praise the Lord. The entertainment industry. The entertainment industry is known as what? Come on. Come on. Entertainment industry. What comes to your mind when you hear the entertainment industry? Huh? Hollywood. Yeah, Hollywood. Hollywood creates its own narrative. But then we also have the other one, the Bollywood. How many of you guys are oriented to the Bollywood? Yeah, there's a lot of people who know about the Bollywood. You know? The other day, the other day I was talking to, to one of our young ones in... And, and, and they were listening to the, to the Bollywood music, you know. And normally the Bollywood music is what, what language? All right. Yeah, no, I said, to, why don't you come to the Hindi service? <laughs> you know, listening to the Bollywood music, why don't you? Oh, I don't understand. So what are you listening to? <laughs> well, we are not only listening, now we are, we are uh, bopping up and down to the beats of the Bollywood music. Because what happens? When you hear the Bollywood music, what happens? Something in you stirs up, and then you can't keep your foot down. In the church, we are, Hup! attention. Nothing moves. The hand don't move. The legs don't move. The lips don't move. You know, we are like stone-faced. But you play the Bollywood music, what happens? Oh, the feet starts moving. Everything starts moving. You know, that's the power of what? The music, that's the power of, of, of these kind of entities that wants to capture our mind. So what am I saying? You know, there are these social media, the entertainment industry, all these things want to capture our mind and to reshape our value system. Praise the Lord want to reshape our value system. And the value system of the world is contrary to the value system of the world. The world and the world is diabolically opposed to each other. So the value system of the world wants to creep into our lives, infiltrate our lives, and to control our lives. It would affect 
individually the way we think, the way we act. Praise the Lord. It will redefine what the sanctity of life is. It will redefine what modesty is. It will redefine what our attire should be. Everything is redefined. That's why Apostle Paul says, you and I need to know how we ought to walk in the house of God. Excuse me. How we ought to walk in the house of God. Praise the Lord. That does not simply mean how we ought to conduct ourselves when we come together as a corporate body. Because we are still the house of God because we are the carriers of the presence of God. The indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit makes us the house of God as well. Makes us the temple of the living God. So it is also carrying ourselves, conducting ourselves in the house of God here when we come to worship and outside when we are in the world. That's the only way we can display what the truth is. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. Praise the Lord. So when the world is peddling and promoting a different value system, a different agenda, a different truth or a lies that are masked as truth. What should we do as a church? How do we respond to it? Do we act ignorant? Do we stay passive or we, we become active? Praise the Lord. How often we are passive. We ignore it. We say it's not my problem. Praise the Lord. See, as a church... If we are the ground and the pillar of truth, there is no way you can ignore it. Praise the Lord. You cannot ignore it. The scripture does not ignore it. God does not ignore it. Listen, nobody wants to look like the bad guy, right? When you declare, display, and defend the truth, you will fall, at least in some people's eye, as a bad guy. Nobody wants to do it. Well, the scripture takes time to address it. Look how the Bible addresses it. God does not ignore it. In other words, God addresses it. Listen, when God brought his children out of Egypt and was taking them into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. God had a forewarning for the children of God. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. To be forewarned is to be forearmed. God gave specific instructions to the children of God. And he told them that you cannot follow the practices, the customs, the culture of the people in the land of Canaan. God gave them specific instructions. You cannot follow the practices, the customs of the land that you are going he, God was very clear about it. If you are in doubt, you can go and check it out. It's written in the, in, in the third and the fourth book of the Bible. What is the third and the fourth book of Bible? Genesis 1, Genesis 2, Genesis 3, Genesis 4. What is it? Leviticus, Leviticus, you can go and check it out. Read from 18 to 20. You can read it in Deuteronomy. Clear instructions were given that you cannot follow the practices and the customs of the people of that world because, and God said very clearly, don't let those practices come into your life, come into your home, come into your family. Praise the Lord. Why would God say that? Because God knows the power of influence. God knows the power of influence. If we don't check 
them out on the door. If we don't check them on the door of our mind, on the door of our heart, on the door of our house, on the door of our family, on the door of our church, it will infiltrate because it is powered by the forces of darkness, the power that works in paganism, the power that works in heathenism, the power that works in the culture of the world. It's powered by the power of evil forces. You cannot be neutral to it. If you are neutral, you will be caught into it. The web of that power can bring you you under it and it can infiltrate your mind through various means it can infiltrate your mind through the television through the media if you are not careful that's why God had a word praise the Lord he said you need to be careful because Satan is constantly trying to infiltrate the minds of young and old alike the minds of those who are part of the body of Christ, in a way, presenting deception to them. Alternatives that look very harmless. Alternatives that look very harmless. Praise the Lord. When you say alternatives, what comes to your mind? Options. What else comes to your mind? Alternatives. Deviations. Very good. Is the author of confusion, right? So he presents alternatives to what God has already divinely designed and established, starting from the very nucleus part of the society the family and one way he does it by presenting an alternative lifestyle okay we'll come to that little later praise the lord the only way we can face it is by actively resisting it praise the lord they creep into our mind through various legit institutions that are in place praise the lord unless we actively get involved engaging our generations in conversation starting in our tables on our dinner tables on our in 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 our homes we will not be able to counter or resist the ploys and the plan and the schemes and the devices of the enemy. No wonder God had a word for his children. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, Ranjit, read it, verses 1 to 7. God made it very clear. One, do not allow the practices of the heathens to come into your home. Praise the Lord. You have to be on a defensive posture. But defensive posture also involves equipping ourselves. And this is a word that he had for every child of God. Read it. Hold you and your son and your grandson. And your grandson. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You, your son, and your grandson. Now I pause that because I've heard parents tell me, we raised our kids and that's it. Now our kids let them raise their children. That's fine. Because when we grow older, we don't have the stamina and the energy to do the physical work. And 
every young man and young lady, young couple in this house, you need to know your parents don't have the kind of energy that they used to have. Run behind you, pick you, flip you, put you on the shoulders, and all those things. Those things are good. Keep those memories, take some pictures and keep it. They are good, but they don't have that kind, same kind of energy. But the truth of God's word has to be imparted and implanted from one generation to another. If you don't want to be caught in the web of lies, this has to start in the home, which is the divine school. Praise God. Hallelujah. It has to start. It starts simply by spending time in prayer together. Praise the Lord. If you have three generations in your home, cuddle and do it. I remember we used to have family altar. Our parents used to sit. We used to sit. Used to in the sense that my parents are not in, 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 uh, is with the Lord now. So p coming together and praying, what it does is it breaks the generation gap barrier. Praise the Lord. It breaks the generation gap barrier. Praise. You don't feel you don't feel uncomfortable sitting with someone who is elderly, older than you. I want to tell the young people in this church: love the older, love everyone, but love and show your affection to the older and the elderly people in the house of God. You know why? Because they are limited additions. Okay? They are limited additions. So you see them, you love them, you show your affection. They might look a bit different and they might not be as proficient in their language as you are. They probably are not using the lingo that you use, but let me tell you, you can learn from them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, children, grandchildren, pass it on till you retire from work. Is that what the Bible says, uh, Drenjit? All the days of your life. Praise God. What a tremendous, awesome responsibility God gives. It is not just simply confined to one or two people, praise the Lord. And then we as a community, as a body of Christ, we also have ministries in places that do it. We have our Awana, we have our Sunday school, we have our youth department, we have our small groups, we have our cell groups. Are you part of any of these or you are a faithful Sunday bench warmer. Thank you for coming. Well, we want to see you more often during the course of the week. Okay, read on, read on. I'm sorry. Hmm. And, your, and that your days may be prolonged. Hmm. Therefore, hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you, hmm. that you may multiply greatly. God is our well wisher. Hello. God is our well-wisher. He wishes us well, and he wants you to have a good life. Praise the Lord. And he's saying, this is what you need to do to have a long life and to have a well, a life that is prosperous in abundance in every manner. Go ahead, read, please. That it may be well with you, that mm. you may multiply greatly. Mm. The Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you mm. a land void with milk and honey. Mm. Next verse. Hmm. The Lord our God is one. Hmm. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, hmm. with all your soul, with all your strength. Hmm. And these words which I command you today, these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. It should be in your heart. It is good to be on the iPhone. It's good to be on the iPad. But it should be in your heart. Praise the Lord. It should be in your heart. Heart. Why? Yes. You shall teach them diligently. You shall teach them diligently. Read. To your children. Hmm. And shall talk of them when you sit in your house. 
You should teach them diligently to your children. You should talk about it when you sit in your house. Huh? When you walk by the way. When you are walking, when you are driving, yes. When you lie down. When you lie down. When you rise up. When you rise up. That's good. That's good. Okay. In other words, make it visible everywhere. Praise the Lord. Actively pursue it. Engage it. Use every opportunity to do what? To That's the only way we can equip them. We live in a world where there is, in the name of Christianity, a lot of other groups come. That is so-called the progressive Christianity, which would try to tell you. How Charles Swindoll puts it, growth is change, but not all change is growth, end quote. I will quote it again. Growth is change, but not revolution that's going on, a culture revolution that is going on that wants to creep into every arenas of our lives, including the spiritual arenas of our lives. Praise the Lord. It infiltrated and corrupted with the things of the world. No wonder you see people around us, they celebrate what they previously condemned and they condemn what they have previously celebrated. and progressive Christianity. We celebrate what we previously condemned and we condemn what we have previously celebrated all in the name of a little accommodation. All now, but we don't know where it can lead us. Praise the Lord. So what do we need to do? We need to come back to the B-A-S-I-C-S. -S. We need to come back to the basics. Praise the Lord. You know, I'll just give one example and just, just wrap it up because of, of, of the lack of time. People came to Jesus and they had a question about marriage. The question was about marriage and divorce. Jesus gave them an answer. But they countered his answer by quoting Moses. Do you know what Jesus did? He said, yes, you're right. That's what Moses said. But in the beginning, that was not how it was. What is the beginning? What is the beginning? In the beginning at creation. In other words, Jesus took them further back to the basics, to the original, to Genesis. Praise the Lord. Listen, Genesis is not a story. It's truth and it's a fact. Praise the Lord. It's a fact about how God created Male and female in the likeness and the image of God. Praise the Lord. It talks about the truth, what God expects about the sanctity of life, the sanctity of marriage, about what gender is. The other way, the other day I was traveling and I was entering into a foreign country. As I was entering into a foreign country, I was told to fill out a form. And within the form, I saw that there was an option. I put my name down. And the option was male, female, 
and so many other options. I scratched my head, not because I was in confusion about my gender, but I scratched my head when I saw what has happened. What has happened? Huh? Simply, one you will see, male, female, other. The other day I was listening to a Senate hearing, and there was such a big debate that was going on, because today they are saying there is a group that is pushing and pressing that you need to le leave the decision of the gender to the person to make up their mind later on. God has no confusion. God's creation in its originality, praise the Lord. He created us male and female. There is no other, there is no need of other, praise the Lord. You start entertaining other and host more that is coming up when you are not aware what the scripture says, praise the Lord. So we need to come back to the basics. And it is our prayer that we will start looking into God's word and define the truth based on what God says about us, about our family, about our church, about everything that God has put into motion. All eyes closed. One minute in the presence of God. As a parent, as a grandparent, would you make a commitment this morning that you will transmit God's word faithfully to your offsprings so that what the psalmist says will be truth that is applicable to us, that each generation shall enumerate the goodness of God to the next generation. So that what Paul says to Timothy will be applicable to us. Hand over the truth to the faithful people who will do the same. Father, we yield ourselves to you this morning. Lord, we do acknowledge that we have not arrived, but we yield ourselves to the scriptures. We pray that your scripture, your word, the truth of God's word, will define our lives. Praise the Lord. It will define our boundaries. It will define our modesty. It will define our attires. It will define our customs. It will define our culture. It will define our thinking. It will define our perceptions. It will define our attitudes. Father, we have quite often fallen short of displaying the truth as it is. We confess it. Father, we pray that you would continue to do a greater, wider, deeper work in me and each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.